I've been doing desktop development for over a decade. And my all-time favorite feature is data binding. Data binding makes my life so much easier as a developer. I get to surface all the state from my business logic into my view without having to write a single line of extra code. It's amazing. And let's be honest, without data binding, WPF would just be a better looking WinForms. And who cares about that? I'll tell you who, nobody. So when I started thinking of moving my desktop skills to the web with Angular, my first question was, does Angular even have data binding? And you know what? You bet your ass it does. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works. Roll the intro. Data binding in Angular is super easy. Unlike WPF, we don't have to worry about a data context or a view model. All we have to worry about is an HTML file and a TypeScript file. Now, with any data binding, the first thing you need are properties to data bind to. So let's go into our component class and let's add a property called name. I'm gonna set this equal to Brian Lagunas. The next step is to data bind an element in our HTML to the value of the name property. Let's start by creating an H2 tag. And now we're gonna use what's called interpolation to create a one-way binding. We do that by typing double curly braces, the name of the property, which in this case is name, and we're gonna close off with two closing curly braces. We're going to save and run the application, and boom, as you can see, we have successfully data bound the HTML to the name property in our class. Another way we could have written this is let's create our H2 tag, and we could set the inner HTML equal to the name property using interpolation. We'll save the application, run it, and we'll see that my name, Brian Laguna, shows up again. Same result, yet a different syntax. In this case, we're using interpolation to data bind to the HTML attribute. On line four, we're data binding using interpolation as direct content. Now there's two important things I wanna mention about interpolation. One, everything's a string. So everything that gets rendered within these curly brackets is a string. Two, everything within the curly braces is referred to as a template expression. So what that allows us to do is more complex things such as concatenation. For example, let's say that I want to concatenate some text such as welcome with the value of the property name. And we're gonna see welcome Brian Lagunas. Pretty cool, right? Well, it doesn't end there. Other things we can do with template expressions is data bind to JavaScript properties and methods. So check this out. Let's say that we want to data bind to the name.length property. So the length is 13. We can also data bind to methods off that property, such as to uppercase. Boom, there's my name, all caps. How freaking cool is that? This is much more powerful than anything in WPF and a lot easier to use. Well, heck, it doesn't stop there. Let's say that I wanted to do some mathematical calculations such as two plus two, boom, four. I'm so good at math. Another thing we can do, which is really cool, is we can data bind to actual methods in our TypeScript file. So I can say something like get title, then we'll come down to our TypeScript file and we'll define that method called get title and it will return here as a title. Save it, run the app and boom, there's the result of your method that you just data bound to using interpolation. How freaking cool is that? However, interpolation does have some limitations. So let's say for example, we have an input and the type of this input is say text and you wanna bind the disabled property to a property in your TypeScript file, right? So let's go ahead and we'll create a property called is disabled. We will come down to our TypeScript file. We'll add is disabled and we'll set it to true. So our expectation is when we bind to this, the text box is going to be disabled. So let's run the app and it is. It's disabled, it's grayed out, I can't click on it. Okay, it works as expected, right? Uh, what happens if we change this to false? We'll save it. Hmm, that should not be disabled. What's going on? Well, remember, I mentioned 
that interpolation is string only. It only represents string. In this case, this attribute requires a Boolean result. Therefore, we cannot use interpolation to data bind to this value. Instead, we have to use what's called property binding. To do that, I'm going to remove the curly braces from our is disabled declaration here. And instead, I'm going to wrap the disabled attribute into square brackets. This has declared that I'm going to data bind to the disabled property using property binding in Angular. So I'm going to save that, just run the application, and now it works as expected. The disabled property is now data binding to a Boolean result, not a string. And I can test this again by setting this back to true, meaning this should be disabled. Run the app and it has become disabled. So the rule of thumb is whenever you have to data bind to a property or attribute that relies on the data type result, use property binding. If it's just a string, use interpolation. It's that time again. Time to announce the winner from our last video for the one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000. Without further ado, the winner is Tim Cochran, congratulations, my brother. You are the winner. I will be contacting you very shortly on how to claim your license. If you'd like to learn how to take your desktop skills to the web while at the same time entering for a chance to win a one-year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000, subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and I'll announce another winner in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.